at least four months, um, you know, and the data will show at least 12 weeks to keto adapt, but probably I think even longer um, before you're going to hit your straps uh, mm. with performance on a ketogenic diet. Now, how do we know this? So when your body burns fat, it initially can turn it into ketones. But if you can't efficiently use the ketones and the cellular machinery for your body to use the ketones does take some time to upregulate, then you'll actually expel some of those excess ketones in your urine. Now, uric acid and ketones compete for excretion through the kidneys into the urine. So that means if you actually have elevated ketone levels um, that are leaving your body through the urine, they'll actually prevent some of the uric acid from also leaving the body. And that means the uric acid level will increase in your blood. So we can actually use the increase um, in uric acid levels to see whether you're keto adapted and then monitor that to see how long it takes to return back to baseline. And when we've actually done that, it takes at least 12 weeks. So from that, we can infer that keto adaptation for athletic performance takes at least three months probably four to six months. Sex hormone binding globulin absolutely is higher in people on carnivore diets. It does go up. We monitor this. We can see it. Um, it's, uh, it's very, very clear to see and very easy for us to see. So um, the question is, is this a problem? The mm -hmm. old thinking used to be that sex hormone binding globulin would bind to testosterone and that would prevent the testosterone from being act inactive. So the truth is we now know that sex hormone binding globulin bound to testosterone still has physiological activity. So this fear about elevated sex hormone binding globulin um, basically preventing your testosterone from having any physiological effect, that's not true. Further to that, if we have a look at what we call the lean mass hyperresponder phenotype, so mm -hmm. I'm sure your listeners will be familiar with Dave Feldman, so that's when people go on ketogenic style diets and their LDL cholesterol goes up, their triglycerides go down, their HDL cholesterol goes up. Yeah. So as a part of that phenotype, I add sex hormone binding globulin. So it's my observations that when people start having those high levels of LDL, almost always they're having a very high level of sex hormone binding globulin. So it's not just isolated to carnivores, but I suspect that because carnivore is such a, a low carbohydrate and can be a high fat diet, that we're seeing that lean mass hyperresponder phenotype. And I certainly don't see any problems with that. There's multiple things that make sex hormone binding globulin going up and down. But if I'm seeing it as a picture of that improved lipid status, that higher LDL, uh, higher HDL, and lower triglycerides and also LDL, then that does not impair athletic or physical performance at all. I've never seen that. So what we do see is that people with chronic inflammatory conditions, and one of the most common reasons people go on a carnivore diet is to manage inflammatory bowel disease. Well, these kind of conditions are usually associated with very low testosterone levels. In actual fact, I'll always do um, testosterone testing, including sex hormone binding globulin, mm. on my patients with inflammatory bowel disease, uh, and it's often low. So I, I don't, I've not seen any data like that. I haven't seen that in my clinic, and that's certainly not my experience. The usual pattern we see is that when people eliminate inflammatory conditions, that their testosterone levels are restored to where they should be.